Hey guys, welcome to video number 15 or 16 for chess improvements. Uh, this is like take 5. Literally been the hardest video for me to make forever. I got it's amazing. So this is what's been up. It's been about 4 or 5 days since I was going to make this video. So in that case that means it's been about 7 to 8 days since the last video has been released. The reason for that we had a snowstorm in Eugene, wasn't really a storm maybe, about two feet and a couple of inches or like a foot and a half and a couple inches uh, the next day. And during that time I was making the video and then my friend called, he was having problems so in the middle of the video he came over and the video, video was unfinished, started again just now, found out that my mic wasn't working properly. Everything is working now though and we can continue on with what the fuck has been going on. And today we're going to do pins. The reason for that is, although last time I know I said the pins are getting easier, so maybe we should take a break from them, what I've decided actually is, no, let's continue on the pins. Let's try to do 30 now instead of 25. And the idea is we're going to try to get a little bit quicker. Because I think the reason we're doing this training is to become very, very comfortable with the pins or f with each tactical motif. So with the pins, we want to push the limits of how quickly I recognize them and use them uh, in the game. So yeah, that's kind of what's going on. So let's just start with this uh, puzzle. This looks like a checkmate because of the pin on the rook. The rook's pin by the bishop on d5 and the king on g8. Rookie can't move. So if my rook takes his rook here, then uh, the king has no flight squares and the rook cannot come to block because of the pin. And he can't fly to g7 because of my queen. So that's a checkmate. Uh, and I did a puzzle before this started. Uh, let's restart this. So let's just go back to trust problems. Oh, but not there. All right, we'll start again. Zero out of zero, and let's see what we've got. Um, this looks like another checkmate problem. Back right mate, uh, rook to a7. Knight can't block because of the bishop pinning the knight to the king on e8. So, yeah, that's just me. One out of one. And we're going for 30 today. So let's just keep on going. Where is the pin in this situation? I do not know. Um, technically, this pawn is pinned between the rook and the queen. Technically, yes. And so this knight is not defended, so the queen can take it. If the pawn takes, then we just take the knight. Easy peasy. Okay. Let's see here. We are white in this situation. What is pinned? What is pinned? Uh, tech technically I don't know why I keep saying that best move that I see right now is rook taking bishop the only way to take that again would be for rook to take rook but then we have queen to c8 um, then they're in checkmate ba basically back rank checkmate there w is one more move with the rook taking so in this situation I'm not exactly sure what we would consider pinned though but it, overall it just looks like a free bishop so we'll take it I'm not sure where the pin is weird okay what else da -da 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 -da. Da -da 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 -da. okay what do we have we have this pawn 
pinned between my queen and his rook. If I take this knight and the pawn takes on c5, then I get that rook for free with tempo. Um, bishop's pinned and the f7 flight square for the king is controlled by the knight. So if my queen moves to h8, usually if this bishop wasn't pinned by my bishop and his king, she would be able, it would be able to take. But because it's pinned, that means that is a checkmate. Five out of five. <sighs> we are black in this situation. And where is the pin? I guess we're self-pinned right now. The rooks are staring at each other, and my knight is kind of in a busy little place. <laughs> that the rook moving doesn't seem like the right idea. I guess the other issue right now is if I move my rook, my knight would be only defended once while he has two attackers. But I think there's something there. Like rook takes, queen takes, queen takes, rook takes. I don't know. Maybe that's not it. If we had some kind of bishop on this diagonal, this pawn would be pinned so my queen could go in and do a little checky check, but that doesn't look like the case either. Knight, rook takes knight d5, rook takes knight d5, or queen takes knight d5, let's start with that one. Then there's rook to d1, rook takes, and then queen takes queen. What about rook takes knight d5, rook takes knight c4? What's there? Rook takes knight, rook takes knight. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Also, is rook to a6 bad? I guess there's queen b7. Hmm. Or actually, I guess, I'm sorry. If rook goes to a5, then there's just rook takes knight, huh? Hmm. Rook takes d5, rook takes c4. Then there's rook to a6. Queen can't defend this rook anymore that's taken, so I think this is the right move. Both of the lines that we've seen seem to muster a decent trade. So the first line we saw was rook takes d5, queen takes d5, then there's rook d1 check, rook takes rook, queen takes queen, or king moves. Then there's, hmm, king could just move. King could just move, but then there's queen takes queen, rook takes queen, rook takes rook, and we'd be up a rook. So that is all of the legitimate moves that can happen there. If rook takes rook and queen takes... Oh, no, I'm sorry, that's the queen takes. If rook takes rook and rook takes rook, then there's rook to a5. Queen has to go to b7. That's the only safe square, at which point we can take the rook. Yeah. So that that's tricky. Well, I liked it. Not sure what the pin was about. I guess it was that self-pin with my knight that we were looking at.
Okay, a uh, knight in this scenario that he has is pinned between my rook and his king, obviously. That means this bishop is not defended. That means I take with impunity. Seven out of seven. Nice. Queens are currently pinned. That means I can move rook to f1. No fly squares for the king. Queen can't take the rook because of the pin. And that would be a checkmate. Mm. Pawn on g5 is pinned by my rook and his king on g1. Knight is undefended. I take knight. I don't take knight. Uh, should have thought about it a little longer. If I take knight, there's rook to e8, queen takes, and then rook takes rook. So that's a no good. So actually, this would be the better move, I think. Yeah, queen takes. Shows what I get for going a little too fast. Just because I'm going faster doesn't mean I shouldn't be looking at all the lines. I feel really proud about doing the puzzle three puzzles ago, but that last one was embarrassing. So knight is pinned. So if I take with my pawn here, then I just win a queen, right? Looks like it. Nito. 9 out of 10. And we're going to 30. This rook is pinned. Queen's in our way. Oh, yeah. Rook to e1 looks good. Rook to a1 looks good. Uh, rook to e1 looks better because rook to a1 has queen to c1. So that's one more move we have to deal with. e1, nothing that the king can do. No flight squares, rooks pinned, etc., etc. We've seen it before. What did my what did his rook just take? Okay. All right. Okay. What is pinned in this scenario? Oh. Hmm. Interesting. First thing I see is queen to c6 check, but isn't really helpful. Is not really helpful there. Hmm. If pawn takes, then queen has to take. Queen can't take rook because pawn would take rook. So pawn takes, queen takes, then there's like queen to f6. Saving my rook, but then my uh, bishop is in a little trouble. There's queen to c6, as I've said before. There's queen to queen, queen takes queen. Hmm. Or queen, and then if queen block, then we can take it a rook. Queen to c6, there's king to g2, g1. Do we have anything for that? No, I don't think so. <sighs> this is tricky. Not exactly sure what we should do, but we are in a dangerous situation right now, that's for sure. Hmm. <sighs> All major pieces, two minor pieces. I would be willing to trade that in. Bishop for a knight seems okay. Or I mean bishop for a rook seems okay. Is there something better? Is there a pin? 
don't really see the pin. I think I'm going to do this even if it's wrong. It's right. Unsound sacrifice. Interesting. Hanging piece. So, yeah, there'd probably be something like this. <coughs> that looks pretty decent. There's also this at some point, so. Anyway, okay. Um, not really sure about that puzzle, but I'm glad we got it right. This is a much simpler one. King, uh, there's a pawn pin between my rook on c8 and his king on c1. This knight is undefended. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Let's see here. What is going on? <sighs> these two pieces kind of pinned between the queen and the king how do we use that to our advantage rook takes rook rook takes rook e6 I don't see anything great after that Knight takes, rook takes, rook takes, queen, nope. Hmm. Rook takes, rook, rook takes, rook. There's also rook takes, rook, pawn takes, rook, e6. Hmm. Curious, 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 curious. Not exactly sure what I'm looking for here. There's also queen takes. Queen takes, pawn takes, rook takes, rook takes. And I'd be down quite a bit. Knight takes, bishop, d6. Queen takes, queen takes, rook takes. Knight takes, rook takes, rook check. King King to H seven Queen to E five Interesting Interesting That knight move is looking more and more attractive. What about knight takes Bishop, rook takes rook e1. Then knight takes e8, rook takes rook f1, king takes rook f1. Hmm. Hmm. Knight takes rook. Or knight takes bishop d6, rook takes. Knight d6 and rook takes rook, and we see that we've already seen that line, and that line's pretty good. Okay. Alright. Oh, there's no queen to e5 actually in that line. So I was thinking of, uh, <coughs> sorry, this, and then this, and then this. King goes to h7. And then I was thinking we could use this diagonal with both of the queen and the bishop on it. However, there's knight takes if we do that. So that's not good. That's not good. 
and we don't have queen to h5 because of the pawn on g6. So that's not great. So maybe it's not as good as I thought it was. Yeah, that line is precarious. What is possible right now? I can't do queen to e5 right now either. Trying to figure out what the pin is that's important here. Ugh. Knight takes bishop d6. Rook takes knight d6. Rook takes rook. King. To h7. Queen moves back to, let's say, g2. We've run a... We've won a rook at that point. Okay. Knight to bishop. Knight takes bishop d6. Rook takes rook e1, knight takes rook e8, rook takes rook f1, king takes rook f1. How does that trade go? Bishop, rook, 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 rook. Minor piece. And then we would also have tempo, because after that rook is taken, queen on c7 has, has to move. Uh, while guarding the knight as well. And we could also do something like uh, knight takes pawn on g7, which would be crazy. Or bishop takes pawn on g7. Either would be quite good. So that, that seems good. Um, what else? There's also knight takes bishop d6. Queen takes knight d6. Queen takes queen, rook takes queen, rook takes rook. Okay. So that's the right answer. So yeah, however it plays out, in the end, I'm getting a decent trade. Uh, what was the other one that we were looking at? So knight takes, rook takes, that takes, that takes, that takes. And then queen has to move while defending this, so maybe there. Then we have that. Knight's pinned now. Oop, no, I don't want to do that with him. That'd be terrible. And then there's, of course, this one. And we would still be winning a rook at the end. So that took a little calculation just for the trades. Wasn't necessarily a difficult puzzle. Just a puzzle that needed a little bit of uh, calculation. Or counting, really. Okay, in this scenario, what is the key here? Well, there's a pin between the queen and my rook. So this pawn isn't actually defending this knight. If the rook defends, so bishop takes knight on d5, rook takes bishop on d5, then there's queen takes rook, which would be checkmate. So neither of these guys are actually good defenders for this knight, which means this knight is free. <laughs> Delicious! Okay. Cool. Cool. Cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. What are we doing in this scenario? This knight. His knight on f6 is pinned by my queen and his king. Is that useful though? I don't know. The queen wants to trade as well. Queen takes queen. Queen takes queen, knight 
takes queen. Knight takes knight, rook takes. Don't really see a lot of strong openings there. Not sure what I'm supposed to see here. So his knight is not a defender for this knight, but there are some sweet defenders for him already. Hmm. Yeah, I don't necessarily see a good fork either. Like I'm thinking knight takes and then queen takes queen. There's no way I can fork both of these pieces in a royal fork and then take the queen afterwards. Don't really see the fork that I'm supposed to see either, I don't think. can't take the pawn on e6 because of the defender there. I don't see anything special over here that the queen can do. There's this. Queen takes knight f6, but then there's pawn takes queen f6. There's also just knight takes knight f6, so that's not great. And yet, there's something with the queens that I have to do here. I'm not exactly sure what, though. What is good in life? To see your enemies driven before you. Is that how the quote goes? I don't know. Hmm. Queen takes, knight takes. No. No, 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 no. What is the pin that I am supposed to see? The only pin I see here is that, but uh, oh, excuse me, I don't see it really coming into the puzzle very much either. I also don't see how this queen to queen thing is going to work out. Queen takes queen c7. Knight takes queen c7. Knight takes knight. The pawns are uh, restructured correctly. Doesn't seem helpful. Doesn't seem helpful at all. Uh, knight takes knight f6 doesn't look like the right answer either. Knight takes knight f6, queen takes queen. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. That doesn't work either. Hmm. Like queen takes queen, knight takes queen, f uh, or c7, if there was some kind of thing we could do with a rook on d8, that'd be good, but there's already a rook defender on both sides of the bishop, so that's not that big of a problem. Another interesting idea is rook takes. In fact, I think that is the right idea. Rook takes defends the queen. So rook takes, queen takes, queen, rook takes, queen. We've won a minor piece. Rook takes, something else takes, and the queen is undefended. So the idea is to take with the rook here because then they coordinate and then the queen can't easily just take. Oh, that took me a second. 
Sorry about that. My ear itched for a second there. Okay. So, this is... Oh, boy. I'm sorry. This pawn is pinned between my rook and his rook on the A file. If I were to take his bishop and he was to take with the rook, or if he was to take with uh, his uh, pawn, then I could take the rook. But then the queen defends that rook. So what's the move after that? Nothing good. Not quite what I would want because I would have traded my rook, my major piece for his minor piece. So that's not quite it. But is that a checkmate if that case happens? So rook takes bishop, right? Pawn takes rook, rook takes rook, queen takes rook a8, right? Then no, it's not. It's not checkmate. La 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 la. Rook takes rook. Or I mean, rook takes bishop. Pawn takes rook. Now let's do queen to d5. There's always king to h8, and then rook can take rook. Queen, take. Okay, that's how the puzzle goes. So there's an in between just from taking the rook. Rook takes bishop, pawn takes uh, rook on b3. Then we'll do an in between move before we take that rook where the queen will go to d5 for a check. No matter how it's defended, we win a rook because now we have the queen on the correct diagonal. And that's how it would go. Something like this. Than that. So yeah, neat. <coughs> okay, our queen is in a little bit of a problem situation. Situation. If the queen were to take, pawn would take, rook check, bishop takes, rook check again. King to h2. So he has a flight square. So this isn't necessarily a bad place for him to be in. Huh. So in all of that, do we win on the trade? I don't know. I'm not sure. Rook, we would be up a rook after the first move. Rook, queen to rook. Two rooks. To queen rook queen for two rooks two rooks and a bishop for rook queen what is that as a count not exactly sure Oh, dear me, I didn't see the bishop and the queen on the diagonal as well. So, <laughs> rook takes queen, then bishop can take uh, queen. Or, I mean, queen takes rook, pawn takes queen. That would set us up for the check first, bishop, check again, king moves, and then bishop would take queen. And then we would be up a minor piece and a major piece. I would like to do this count officially. So we're up five, we're down four, we're up one, we're down four, we're down three, or we're down one, and then we'd be uh, up ten. Oh no, we'd be uh, up eight. I think that's right. Queen takes rook. Uh, pawn takes queen. So queen rook. 
Rook, Brook to Queen. Brook, Brook to Queen, Brook. To Queen, Brook. Bishop, Rook, Rook to Queen, Rook. King moves to uh, H8. Then. Calculation of being up eight doesn't seem correct to me, but maybe it is. Up five, down four, up one, down four, down one, up eight. I guess it is. Interesting. Cool. Let's see here. We are white in this scenario? Yes. Yes, we are. His rook, my rook is pinned by his rook and my king. If my rook takes his rook, then... Uh, he can take my rook afterwards. And not only that, the queen coming down could become kind of a pain. Kind of a pain. Hmm. Some kind of skewering potential on the seventh row there. But don't see a lot. We could defend our rook with our rook, but then we'd just be trading rooks, in which case we can just trade this way. I feel like our queen could help in some way, but I'm not exactly sure how. There's something like queen d3, but the issue with that is queen d3, your rook takes rook, queen takes rook, pawn takes rook, queen takes queen, rook takes queen, bishop, and then so we'd be bishop versus rook at the end there, and that doesn't seem great. We are up in material currently, so trading isn't quite that bad, although having, you know, the potential of the queen doing tricky things after the D file is open, does scare me a little bit. I like my bishop and my pawn on B5, or I mean C5 and B4. However, this pawn coming down is going to make this little duo a little bit hard to keep. Rook takes rook, pawn takes. Nice thing is we can do bishop, uh, bishop takes this, bishop takes that. So that's kind of nice. I don't see any real clear moves with my queen. There is queen to h5, check. Queen to h5, check, can be met two different ways. Queen to h5, there's pawn to g6, queen moves back up, king has to move, queen, queen, trade, rook takes, rook takes, and we'd be trading down and we'd be getting the two pawns. The other one potentially is queen to h5, king to g8. Where does that leave us? Nowhere astounding, I don't think. No. 
So I think king to g8 would be the right move on queen to h5. And since we're pinned here, we have to deal with this rook somehow. Rook takes rook seems pretty good. That's probably not the right answer, though. I would guess it's not the right answer. Oh, well. Oh, no, it was. Interesting. I want to take a look at this for a second. So yeah, I guess they don't want to do this. Oh. Uh, didn't even think about that. For some reason, I don't know why I didn't see that in my calculation. By the rook taking there, the queen is put into a very similar scenario of pins. Huh. 18 out of 19, we're doing pretty decently. Oh, we just got forked, though. Fuck! Uh, this pawn is actually not a defender for this pawn. Sadly, we don't have any way of taking care of this pawn, however. Um, there is... Knight takes bishop, however. Which forces the queen and which opens up this pawn for the queen to take. I think that's the right way to go. Yes, it is. Because now the tempo's on our side. Even if this happens, there's that. And then there's this very soon. Yeah, I don't think there's a lot of ways out of that, actually. <coughs> okay, queen is pinned. Why the fuck would I not trade that? Is there a checkmate? I would think the only reason why the rook wouldn't take the queen is because there's a checkmate. But this just looks like a really good trade. Let's look for the checkmate first and then we can think about it a bit more. Oh, there's almost a checkmate. There's a knight to f6. That would be almost a checkmate if not for... If not for bishop takes knight on f6. If not for that. What else? What else do we have that could be good? Oh, I guess they're straight up queen to g6, because this rook is controlling that whole thing. Queen can't take queen because of this uh, pin here, and king has no fight squares, and there's no other pieces that can defend against this. So yes, there was a checkmate. Just had to take a second to think about it. But honestly, in that situation, rook taking queen, that simplifies, and we just won a queen and it looked like there was just more coming anyway so I don't think it was that big of a deal to checkmate but efficiency does have its own rewards uh, rook takes bishop because this uh, pawn on c3 is pinned on the c file between all of these rooks let's see here what do we have we are white I mean, technically I'm not, but... What do we have? What do we have that looks good? Hmm. <sighs> Pawn pin between me and the queen, but I don't think it really comes into play here. Not that I see. There's rook takes bishop. Pawn takes rook. Mm. 
Knight takes c5. Rook can't take. Oh, there's rook takes bishop right now because the queens are both on the same line, actually. And then, and then this pawn is also pinned. So basically, rook takes bishop, pawn takes rook, queen takes queen, pawn takes queen, rook takes rook. And we would be up by a minor piece and a major piece at the end of it. Or not necessarily, I'm sorry. We would be up two points here and then five points for the rook at the end. So that's cool. This is the line that I'm looking at. Clearly, they don't have to do that, and they can be just down three points, which would be better than being down by more. So there's that. We are white in this situation. Rook's gotten greedy and taken a pawn, so what do we do? What do we do about that greed? Um, this knight is not defended. This pawn is pinned on the f-file between my rook and his king. Let's take that knight. We are 23 and 24. Did he take a pawn? He took a pawn from us. He took a pawn from us! He took a hokey pokey pawn! And you turn yourself a pawn! So there's rook takes here, if queen takes. I don't see it. I was going to see bishop, something. I don't know. I don't know. There's also potentially queen takes. Queen takes. Queen takes. Rook takes, king takes. Nope. Nap, 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 nap. I don't see it. Rook takes, queen takes d7. Queen to a8. I would like to go to b8, but I can't. In fact, queen to a8, there's no. Queen would only have either d8 or c8. If c8, queen takes queen. If d8, there's bishop takes c6 check. King has to move, then queen takes queen. So yeah, that's the right answer. And then, so basically, if this happens, then we have this. Which is pretty sweet. Yeah. Okay, cool. 24 out of 25, and we have five more puzzles to go. Our queen's in a little bit of a... Little bit of a... Little bit of a... Yeah, yeah. A little bit of a thing. We're, we're in a little bit of a thing here. If knight takes that uh, bishop, then we have queen takes. And they would be forced to use a pawn move there. Or they'd be put into a dangerous situation. Also, looking at this, we can just do bishop takes here. And if queen takes, then rook takes, rook takes. No, that doesn't look good. Oh wait, does that look good? Up a rook, down a bishop. Up a rook, down a bishop. Up a knight and a rook, down a rook. So equal exchange at that point? Hmm. It's not great. It's not great. It's not good. We could also do rook takes first. Hmm. So rook takes knight on e4. Rook takes knight. Rook takes rook. Bishop takes rook. Queen takes. 
Mm, don't see it. If we could somehow potentially scare them, that'd be great. Hmm, do I like the bishop move more? There's also bishop takes rook, knight takes, and then bishop takes queen. Takes. Okay, so bishop takes rook actually comes with a lot. Uh, well, with a knight on d7, maybe not, because there's always this for defense as well. But if that happens, then that happens, then... Oh, interesting, okay. So, bishop takes, knight takes, comes with rook takes, Knight goes to f8, knight to e7 check, king to h8, rook takes knight. So bishop takes rook has to be met with, it can't be met with uh, knight takes queen, has to be met with queen takes uh, bishop. Queen takes bishop. point what do we have there's rook takes knight rook takes rook queens on d8 there's knight takes d6 I don't necessarily see anything there hmm interesting and if it wasn't for this pawn or this queen on this diagonal, then this would be a really good move too. But it's not. There must be something within the calculation of that bishop takes rook move that I'm not seeing correctly, because that seems like there is, there are some more potentially dangerous lines. Bishop takes, queen takes, then I guess queen can just get out of the way, honestly. And that should be good. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, we did a good trade. After that, we can find some kind of move to put us in a safer place. Maybe something like this. What is there for him then? Not much. Not much at all. He can always go back there. I don't know. I don't know what the next best move after that would be. I am curious. Go back. He takes. What is the correct line here? So I go to a safe square, and he has to go back. Yeah. All right. Cool. And we get a pawn. And then, hmm, interesting. Yeah. All right. Twenty-five out of twenty-six. What the fuck do we have here? Um, so this pawn is between the knight being on a7, which would be a checkmate, a very interesting and strong checkmate where the king has no flight squares. So that means this knight is not defended, which means free knight for me, yay. Free knight for me, yay. And then after that, I can do that probably. So he would have to find something to do. It is not a good place to be. That looks pretty good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I'd do as black in that situation. Um, This pawn pinned between my rook is king. This bishop not defended. 28. 28. Back rate... Back rank mate potentials, knight takes knight, pawn takes, queen takes, oh Jesus, did I make a move? I didn't make a move, you son of a bitch, showing them what was going on, I, I shouldn't even be able to move the black pieces anyway, but yeah, this is how it would go, and that would be a mate, so, that's weird, what did I try to move? 
Anyway, uh, I'll count that as a win for me. That's interesting. 28, 29, and last puzzle. So what do we have here? Another back rank mate potential. But how do we utilize this back rank, back rank mate potential here? Queen takes, queen takes. Rook takes, queen takes, queen takes, queen takes? No. Queen takes, rook takes, rook takes. Because there's also queen takes, rook takes, check, rook takes, queen takes. But then I guess there's that. So that's not good. JK, queen takes, queen has to take. Rook here. Queen takes, rook takes. I mean, currently we are kind of up material. Rook takes, rook check, rook, queen, check, knight. Wait, what was wrong with the rook takes originally? <laughs> rook takes, queen takes. That's what was wrong with it originally. Well, rook takes, queen takes. There's rook here. Queen is forced to take queen. So rook takes looks good. Yeah, and that's 30. 29 out of 30. That's not bad. A little bit of calculation done. Um. So yeah... Although some of them were very easy, some of them still take a little bit of calculation. Is that due to them not being, not necessarily being tactical pins? Maybe. Is it because they are slightly harder puzzles with tactical pins that I have to think about? I would say some of them were. I don't really know. This is a difficult point in my... Um, practice with tactical motifs that I'll have to think about a little bit more. I don't necessarily know if I'm getting everything I want out of this training method. Uh, am I still getting more from the pins? Am I not? I'm not sure exactly. Gonna have to think about that a little bit more. Gonna have to think about that. I think for now, however, the practice is going well. I'm considering moving over to forks, but I feel like why move to forks when we are so deep within the pins right now? I feel like a better... Uh, a better, more effective use for our time might be keep on focusing more on pins. Having said that, however, as a beginner, I believe personally in any system for a beginner, uh, it's better to get a wide breadth of knowledge to start with to kind of grow your foundation out and then slowly build up from there. So maybe I'm trying to focus too much on pins. And I think maybe my original thought that I should move on to forks again is a good idea. Um, yeah, so I'm going to debate this a little bit more bet between myself and, you know, some thoughts about what is the most effective training technique for now. But currently I'm thinking as a beginner, no need to become like a super pin master. I think we've done the one move pins enough now. Maybe just move on to the forks for a bit, get used to forks. Maybe take a look at a couple more motifs. Because some of these calculations, I think what I'm lacking is spotting some of the other tactical motifs that I should be looking at. Uh, if I do 
maybe take some time to look at those. Uh, my calculations will get better as well. Um, incidentally, a lot of the mistakes that I've been making previously where I wasn't able to spot different tactical motifs, I think is getting better. So the breadth of knowledge seems to be the right way to go at this moment. So that will be something we will take a look at next time. So next time, I know I promised this last time, but actual next time for number 17 or 18 or whatever, we will be doing forks. We will be going back to forks. We will do more fork puzzles and Probably with the forks, we'll still stick to like 25 maybe. We'll do 25 forks and then, because I think 30 is a little bit too much. Um, maybe it's because I'm too tired today, but I think 25 is a good limit. Honestly, I think 20 is a good limit for these videos anyway. So let's do 20 forks next time. And then if we're feeling good about them, we'll do maybe a different tactical motif after that, maybe not. And we'll focus on the breadth of tactical motifs for now, instead of trying to focus too deeply into any one tactical motif. And I've said that word quite a lot now. So yeah, thanks for watching. I'm not gonna share this one publicly. Uh, as I promised, I will wait until five more before I share. So yeah, I think the last one was number 15. So, the 20th one will be the publicly shared one. For now, if you subscribe to me to watch these videos, excellent. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, if you didn't like the video, make sure to thumbs down. Uh, make sure to comment, though. Thumbs up, thumbs down, subscribe, I don't care. But if you have anything to say, please let me know. Any questions, any ideas about what you think would be the best move for chess progression, I'd love to hear it. All right, see you guys next time.